Hi, welcome to Come to Think of It, a program where we talk about things that matter. I'm your host, Casey Scott, and we've been having a series of conversations with uh, addictions counselor, Roger Lockhart, and we're here to continue that today. Roger, welcome to the program. Thanks, Casey. Glad to be back. Now, uh, in this series, we have spoken uh, a lot about alcoholism uh, as sort of uh, a prototypical stand-in for addiction, Mm -hmm. primarily because that's what most people are most familiar with. Uh, So I just want to refer to something. um, We're not talking about alcoholism as a disease. However, when alcoholism is, is discussed as a disease, it's uh, typically presented as um, progressive, incurable, fatal. Uh, so today I want to f- focus on the progressive part mm-hmm. and talk about um, the progress of the disease and, and that ultimate moment of h- hitting bottom, right? which mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, becomes a, or can become a turning point. Mm-hmm. And now you, you have identified various stages of progression in, in your work. Can you, can you give us a little bit of an outline mm-hmm. of that? Absolutely. I'd be glad to. But let me, for a moment, just for sort of a fine-tuning clarification, mm-hmm. let me make note of the fact that I don't have any argument at all with the notion that alcoholics become diseased. Yes. But um, my uh, difference from the mainstream uh, school of thinking is the idea that alcoholism emerges out of some kind of disease state. <clears throat> uh, that can happen, uh, but it is by no means the rule. Mm-hmm. Um, it is the rule that the longer a person is involved in any addiction, the more disease they become uh, in the classical realms of uh, physical, mental, and spiritual. Yes. Um, and uh, but that is not it is not the disease that is the root cause of the of the addiction, uh, but the other way around. That's typically, why, it yes. is not. Sometimes a disease state can predispose a person for a certain kind of uh, shortcuts or payoffs, the way we've talked about in previous mm-hmm. conversations, uh, to to have a particular poignancy for them. But um, that by no means needs to be the case. Yeah. Um, the Progression, one of the most useful ways that I find to talk about progression is to note that um, it's it's a commonplace observation that addiction tends to uh, encroach upon our well-being in, or, or let me start from the other end, it's a commonplace about recovery that First, the physical part of the, the, of the person improves, mm-hmm. then the mental part, mm-hmm. and then lastly, the spiritual values part. Um, the progression is the reverse of that. What tends to go first as the, as the uh, addiction becomes more and more prominent in the worldview, in the landscape, in the biographical storyline of the person is values mm-hmm. uh, and, and uh, uh, states of reverence and awe and humility and so forth because those things are sought increasingly through the instrument of, of the uh, addiction, whether mm-hmm. it's chemical, behavioral, or whatever. And uh, so the authentic experiences that we lump together under the term spiritual uh, uh, dissipate and degrade and degenerate and uh, so we get the we get the uh, the classic uh, lie, cheat, and steal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and unfortunately that doesn't exhaust the list. <laughs> um, and then from there, there is not that there's a sequence, of course, right. but um, then the intellectual um, uh, well-being of the person, the general cognitive functioning. And that's for a variety of reasons, certainly physiological, but a lot of them are psychological in the sense that one increasingly finds oneself undermined by by one's own uh, life patterns and behavior so that you might say uh, we have a harder and harder time making sense of ourselves, Mm -hmm. making sense of the world that we're in. Uh, And that's uh, 
in large part because we are trying to make everything fit within this one solution. Mm. Uh, I, yeah. I, I often hear people talk about um, things that they've lost, not possessions, not mm -hmm. objects, but in terms of, of um, interests or mm -hmm. um, things that they may have mm -hmm. at one time been passionate about who, that just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that part of this? Uh, oh, absolutely. I, I'm pretty sure in the, uh, one of the more recent conversations we had, I used this gesture mm -hmm. about how at the beginning of any addiction, it expands the experience of life. And then over the course of progression, mm. which again, I'll, I'll say I know I have before, but it's a little frustrating that the word progression starts with the syllables progress <laughs> <laughs> because it's hardly progress right. in any positive sense of the word. But there we have it. It's, it's the progression of the deterioration. Um, and over the course of progression, which, which, uh, which takes longer yes. than the initial expansive, uh, the great bang. Yes. <laughs> The Big Bang, the Big yes. Bang of addiction. You know, it's never occurred to me before, but that's. I think Great pretty apt. Bang actually is, is better than <coughs> the space. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Well, I know the physicists are actually looking for a replacement for Big Bang, so oh, well. we'll offer it to them. But <laughs> that happens typically. It, occasionally, an addiction has a gradual onset, but very frequently there's the aha moment or the aha little interval of time. Uh, and then after that, Great Bang, Big Bang, uh, there's the gradual attrition, the diminution of uh, the sense of scale, scope, mm. richness, uh, reward, meaningfulness, all of that stuff uh, starts to um, diminish and one ends up with a life experience that is infinitely smaller than whatever the original life. The, 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 world, the world at that point may be one room with the shades drawn. Shades drawn and bottle under the bed because, as I think we talked about before, we can't make it through the night without having yeah. to have another drink. That's infinitesimal. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that kind of uh, diminishment that is a feature of progression. And then finally, and we've alluded to it with this person in the room with the shades drawn, we can be quite sure that their physical status mm. is gravely compromised by then as well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's true of all addictions, um, whether they are, again, chemical addictions or behavioral addictions. You end up with the person who is addicted to uh, exercise, jogging, whatever, doing themselves grave bodily harm. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, with the doctor's reiterated insistence, you really must stop blah, blah, whatever it right. is, jerking or, or uh, jogging or, or whatever, any of those J words that may apply. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it occurred to me in thinking about this conversation, knowing we were going to talk about progression, that it might be useful to go back and look at a uh, little construct that I believe we've touched on early when we were, we were trying to evoke the, the basic storyline mm -hmm. uh, of how I make sense out of the onset of addiction. And uh, that involves a, a cluster of experiences that could be called uh, feelings, and they are definitely related to that, that be, could be called uh, longings, mm -hmm. and we've talked a lot about how important longings and fulfillment are in the storyline yes. of addiction and sobriety, um, and could be called existential features. So I don't want to get, I don't want to try and Right. pin it down to one vocabulary because I think that sort of impoverishes it. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, I should have a chalkboard here or something, but mm -hmm. I think it's pretty easy to visualize. We're talking about four kind of feelings experiences that add up to constitute a couple of other um, figures. Those four are power, mm -hmm. freedom, safety, and connectedness. And the way, I, when I do write it on a board, and I'm gonna do it in reverse for the camera, I put power first on the board because power kind of like, absent power, you can't do anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I put freedom, 
next and up elevated a little bit uh, to give that sense of freedom, the ability to lift off. Sure. And then I put safety on the bottom because really, if we don't feel safe, then we're lacking the foundation. Mm -hmm. And lastly, connectedness, which kind of, oh, it's not just me in this universe. And, um, and then the idea that these four domains of experience, feeling, fulfillment, and so forth, over the course of our lifetime, converge to contribute richly to our our meaning making, mm. our uh, construction of concepts about who we are, how we fit here, and so mm. forth. And then out of all of that mishmash, I believe is the technical term for it, <laughs> emerges, again in an ongoing sense, always uh, shifting and coming into being and so forth, is an experience of identity. So. Just to quickly reiterate, we have power, freedom, connectedness, safety, meaning, and identity. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, pretty much every addictive technology will make a generous contribution to each of these domains. Um, certainly with major differences in emphasis from person to person, from technology to technology, yes. cocaine's gonna do something different than marijuana's gonna do something different from hallucinogens from, and so forth, and then behavioral addictions and so forth. Um, but I think you can get a lot of mileage out of, out of that little construct. But right now the mileage I wanna get out of it is to say that to whatever extent the addiction made promises in those areas, in the person's individual experience, now that the Big Bang has achieved its lofty mm -hmm. success, what happens over time, and again, might be decades, might be years, might be months, it starts to uh, go through what I call a symmetrical betrayal. Mm. So each of those domains, which had been enhanced by the addictive technology, begins to to go bankrupt, begins mm. to become anemic, mm -hmm. begins to lessen, to become corrupted, perverted, etc. So that the experience of power, and now let's just fast forward to here, the experience of power has become an un unimaginable experience of helplessness, impetus, I can't do anything effective on my own behalf or anybody else's behalf in the extreme case. The, ex the experience of um, freedom, totally, mm. totally chained to whatever this sure. addictive technology is. Uh, the experience of safety, I remember, this is a, a little detail from my own personal history as an alcoholic, I remember, and this is five or six years before hitting bottom and turning things around. So this wasn't me in some very late stage mode. I remember sitting on the couch in my apartment in the afternoon alone and I have my legs drawn up on the couch, my arms are on my legs, the shades are drawn. Mm -hmm. I'm in terror and I couldn't begin to tell you of what. Yeah, I remember, I used to call it the, the nameless terror. Yeah. 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 It, it, this is one of the one of the baffling things of, about uh, this progression. Now, you would think that a person would at that point say, "Oh, something's wrong here." Right. And and there in 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 my own experience, as I look back, there were numerous signposts along the way, all of which I missed. Um, I may have taken note of it, mm -hmm. but the significance of it escaped me. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in a way, Trace, uh, Casey, that we, we miss it. Uh, I think this might be what you're getting at. We don't so, so much miss it as we decide not to acknowledge it because we haven't the slightest idea what the hell to do about it. Mm. So and better. we may not even connect it to the addiction. Right. So. But, but wh whether we do or not, we don't know what to do about right. it. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, so just to round out the list, and then perhaps we can segue right into the hitting bottom, if it, unless there are the things you want to check on the progression thing. But so what we have left then is connectedness, and um, don't need to tell you how incredibly. Oh, and I should mention that in in both the positive and the negative modes, connectedness refers not merely to connectedness to others, people but it refers to a larger connectedness, a, spend, a sense of, yes, I, I fit here, I make sense in this larger context. Mm -hmm. And internal connectedness, you know, that I have an internal coherence. Right. And uh, I think, again, we did touch on this, but now's a good time to... So, so in the um, progression mode, all of that coherence becomes incoherent, right. increasingly and uh, disjunctive and uh, ill-fitting Ill yes, yes. at best. Now, I'm reminded at this point of, of the, the adult child, which you described as the saddest and purest, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. these, these elements are, are, are present from the beginning uh, mm -hmm. with, with this person, and there doesn't seem to be a, a way to, to that you it, I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. How how could there possibly be a resolution for for this person? I mean, mm -hmm. I know that there is, but mm -hmm. uh, I also know that's extremely difficult for for those individuals. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, so then we've got the four mm -hmm. feelings, experiences, in a very uh, modest way of naming them, and that they. Inter interweave to yield an ongoing experience of meaning or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's worth appreciating that one of the richest features of the realm of meaning is questions, mm -hmm. is not knowing. But to know that you don't know is indeed taking a major step. Sure. A rock doesn't know that it doesn't know. Right. As far as you we know. You can't seek an answer if you don't have a question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so there's that whole domain of meaning, and then, and and uh, life for the addict, as progression uh, digs in and tears apart the addict, uh, becomes just a uh, grotesque uh, mockery of any notion that there is meaning, meaningfulness. Or certainly, if there is any meaning, that it could have any uh, benign, uh, positive consequences for the addict themselves. Right. And then out of that, emerging out of that, is an experience of identity that just is appalling, um, uh, bereft, uh, so, full of shame, despair. Yeah. So ultimately, we get to this point of total hopelessness and despair. If we live long enough. If we live long enough. Yeah. And and this is this is what um, I, I typically when I I, I view this as uh, the moment at which we we must decide whether we're going to live or die. We don't necessarily know that that's the decision we're making, but um, when we get to that point, um, maybe you can describe a little bit what that is, because you have a way of, of breaking that down in, in, mm -hmm. in different points of view, mm -hmm. which I, which I uh, deeply appreciate. <clears throat> be glad to. Um, <laughs> I'd be glad to, because I'm on the other side of the event. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just want to note that I appreciate your description of when we decide when we're going to live or die. Although I think that that may, in fact, be a more coherent thought than is often available to Absolutely. someone who's hitting bottom. Absolutely. That's why yeah. I say we don't necessarily know yeah. that's the decision we're making. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I have three ways that I like to characterize hitting bottom. Uh, each emerged out of a different set of reflections and conversations. Uh, I, I like them all. For me, it's kind of like different angles on the hologram. Mm -hmm. um, all of the information is true, which is just different uh, aspects of the truth. And chronologically, and uh, I think perhaps logically as well, uh, the first formulation that came to me was um, that hitting bottom 
is the intersection of pain and understanding. And in that f formulation, what I'm uh, picturing is a descent into deeper and deeper levels of pain, mm. which in theory and indeed in fact can go on and simply until it becomes unbearable and the person removes themselves in some uh, f ferocious way. In sure. Some, yeah. sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but as they descend, the odds are pretty good that they're going to bump into various um, attempts on their part, on the part of others around them, on the part of information from the world that says, well, here's what's going on for you. And uh, very often the, the characterization will be you're, you're an addict, you're an alcoholic, you're whatever you are. And the evidence is fairly plausible, uh, probably by that point. So um, if, if the explanation, if the storyline, if the body of understanding, and I put quotes there, um, uh, beckons to the person, adds up to the person as having credibility and plausibility, they say, OK, let me go for it. And that can be um, the turning point into a perfectly viable and uh, effective um, trajectory of sobriety. But it often isn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, while there are various reasons that it often isn't, one of the outstanding ones is that the body of understanding that they encounter um, proposes that their addiction will be resolved through some form of control. What you need is a different diet. What you need is a different wife. Mm. What you need is a different X, Y, Z. Now, all of those may be true, but if the belief is some strategy of control is going to get me out of my, my jackpot here, out of my fundamental dependency relationship with the addiction, the odds are very slim. We, we spoke at one point uh, in an off-camera conversation mm -hmm. about the, the um, uh, appropriateness of the word fix oh, yeah. for, the, for, the, for the addict's um, mm -hmm. need for mm -hmm. uh, whatever the addictive technology is. And um, I see it again in, in this construction where uh, the view is if I can just fix this or mm -hmm. fix that, mm -hmm. then everything will, will fall mm -hmm. into place. And it's reassuring because although we don't know it 99 point something percent of the time at that stage, um, our fundamental addiction is not to vodka or sex or X or Y, it's to the belief system that control, mm. some version of control right. is going to be our salvation. Yes. Um, and we cling to that. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes up and says, you need to give up vodka, that's alarming. If somebody comes up and says, you need to surrender, <laughs> that's unbearably appalling. Mm. Um, you need to get out of the driver's seat. It's like, you're kidding me. I need more control, not less. So, um, so, so that's the first characterization of hitting bottom. Um, the intersection of pain and understanding and happily, often enough, the pain, the understanding is right enough. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, doesn't have to, one doesn't have to uh, come out with a fully developed philosophical uh, mm -hmm. embrace of uh, surrender and so forth. It's just It can be as simple as what happened to me when one night, uh, for no particular reason I can put my finger on, I looked at the glass and I said, that's my problem. Mm -hmm. It was just yeah. that clear to me yeah. in that moment. Yeah. So... Um, the, the other two, and I suspect we're getting close to the end of our time, so I'm going to try and cover these um, expeditiously. The other two characterizations are uh, hitting bottom is the ownership of powerlessness. And again, that sounds kind of philosophical mm -hmm. and uh, theoretical. Uh, experientially, it tends to boil down to sort of the ghastly realization, I can't make this work. Mm -hmm. 
I can't. And it's not for want of trying, God knows. It's mm. not for want of being willing to sell out everything I hold dear, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I can't. The, the That's paradigm an, of control is broken. Right, although, uh, again, that, that language is just like, I, I can't make it work. Yeah. I, I try to go into oblivion. I try to, I can't make it work. Yeah. Um, and the third description, uh, and the one that I'm most fond of, because it evokes the existential dimension of addiction and of sobriety, which for me is, is uh, the heart of the matter, is the uh, realization that, and it's, it's uh, borrowed from AA's step one. Um, I, am, I am no longer willing to live with the person I have become. I, 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 I gave that little personal anecdote and I mm -hmm. want to expand that because mm -hmm. I had two immediate thoughts when, when that thought occurred to me that my, that's my problem right there. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first thought was I'm never going to have any kind of life at all as long as I continue to drink. Mm -hmm. So that's the acceptance of powerlessness. Mm -hmm. And the th Second thought was, but I have no life without alcohol. And that, in a sense, is the, mm -hmm. is the recognition that I can't live mm -hmm. this life anymore. Right. So it, it's kind of a, an interesting, in, in my own experience, it's kind of an interesting uh, mm -hmm. way of seeing that. Mm -hmm. And I think you are distinguished in, and not unique, but, but in a minority in that you uh, describe having had some capacity to put language mm. to your experience. Uh, uh, and certainly people can do that, but very often people come in and, you know, very intelligent, educated people come in to, the, to that moment and they are wordless. Mm -hmm. They are, uh, because they have had such faith in their thinking mm. that, um, to find themselves in a situation where it's all about, um, I can't make this work. Mm. They're bereft of tools. Two things worth noting, and, and we, 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 unfortunately we have to close, but uh, two things worth noting I think is, first of all, this moment that we talk about may be months, even years in, in, in duration. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a moment as it mm -hmm. was in mm -hmm. my case. Uh, second, that um, this moment is fraught with danger. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and can and does end in suicide, among other things. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. uh, with that, unfortunately, um, Roger, we must end this conversation again, but we will pick it up another time because there is, there is more, to, more to this story that we haven't, uh, haven't covered. But Quite thank you very much for, My pleasure. for being here today. Thanks, Casey. And thank you for joining us on Come to Think of It. Hope you'll be with us next time. Until then, drive cheerfully. I'm Casey Scott. <laughs>